And there she is, my Gallup 2 into one Muddy Comet Exhaust for my 2021 Sportster. My model's equipped with O2 bungs, so it'll fit any air-cooled Sportster that's fuel-injected. And on this review, we have highlights of the install, an interview with the manufacturer, street sound tests, including sound pressure level, and my six-month review of ownership. My name's Kenny Quest. I want to thank you for clicking on the video. Let's get into the review. While Pedro's removing the stock exhaust, let's get our parts in order. All right, we've got the k high flow air filter, which will increase the airflow into the intake and fits the stock Harley airbox. We've got a DynoJet PowerVision 4 flash tuner. It comes with one license and I can add multiple licenses for future bikes and it doesn't need to stay connected while riding the bike. Here's the Gallup Flying Comet 2 one exhaust, set up for reuse of the stock O2 sensors. Let's see how Pedro's come along in locating the stock O2 sensors. Disconnect the O2 sensors. The rear wiring is hiding over here under the side cover and make sure you get it out of the way so it comes out with the exhaust. Same thing with the front, it was hiding the, over here the plug. So I removed this clip and it was underneath. That's very important. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool, dude. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited to hear this thing run. You missed this bike already? It's been here for a week. Wait till we put a 1275 kilowatt. <laughs> mm, why is this going up over here? Yo. Yo, why are you making my life hard here? Okay, so I got to put this one for it goes up. That's so weird. Okay. Is that how you want to do it? Is that how you want to do it? The tight fitment all over the place. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Look at those bends that they made, man. It's just Jesus Christ, dude. This is pure art. Dude, this is... These guys are artists. This guy. Or these guys. I don't know if it's a whole crew or not. As far as I know, it's just this guy in his garage. Dude, he's a genius. He's an engineer. He's a genius. If you go to the website, Gallup Motorcycles, it's got a about me section. You can read his story. Dude, this guy, he's a genius. This is like beautiful. Holy schmo. Dude, it's impressive. It's just impressive. The bike looks fast just with it on there. Got like 100 horsepower just for, with this. So one thing in this exhaust that it's a concern to me as a technician and as a motorcycle rider and as a motorcycle builder is uh, the fact that it doesn't have a mount. You know, it doesn't have anything that it's holding it in place from vibration. Okay. Well, well, so uh, all that's holding it, it's the exhaust studs over here. Yep. And I foresee in the future, I foresee stress. a problem here. He's going to put stress in the exhaust nuts. So and where, where could there, you attach something? Would it be? I would attach it to the frame itself. Like this bolt over here, it would be perfect. Okay. To do an attach to here. Now, we can make this happen by doing it ourselves or the guy can just say like, yeah, man, if there's an issue, I will warranty and send you a new one. You know? Well, that could be five years down the road, so who knows? It won't make it. Oh, okay. The way it is, if it, if it has stress fractures, will show somewhere around here, I would say stress because this is the heavier spot here stress fractures something is going to happen where you know i just don't trust it i've seen like in the bassanis the early bassanis even with the mounts it would break right here and the mounts will break too so uh, you got to come that the harleys have a vibration like no other and especially this motor that is rubber mounted it shakes back and forth like crazy and this exhaust without amount to keep this from shaking that's what i think it's going to cause a problem you know All right. this is my only takeaway it's a beautiful exhaust system the it's art it's pure art i'm like super impressed it's beautiful like this whole setup over here where one goes on to the other one this goes around like dude i'm super stoked but again i'm not an engineer yeah, I just build choppers and stupid stuff like that and cafe racers. 
and I always had the concern of doing an uh, exhaust mount that goes, in this case, it has to go to the motor, not to any part of the end frame, but to the motor, because the exhaust moves with the motor. Yep, so what we'll do is we'll email Gallup, we'll, we'll express our concern, and we'll see what their response is. I'll take a picture of that exact spot, we'll have that answer from Gallup. Don't forget to plug back in your sensors. Wait a second, I have to redo it. It comes through the outside here, doesn't it? I mean, oh, the sensor went up now. You saw that? It goes up instead of going sideways. You sure you got the right cables? <laughs> yeah, there you go. And this one over here does a whole thing where it comes through here and it goes through here and it connects here. and slides in there there you go ready for this ready. do you want to be the guy pushing the button first of all let me see if it's not in gear it's in neutral you're good to go bro if you want to push that button It's not too exaggerated too, so. All right, so I have Andy from Gallup Motorcycles on the phone. We had a question for him. We just finished the install. Yeah, pretty easy to install. And let me tell you, Andy, the workmanship is fantastic. It's beautiful. Yep, I love it, man. Great job, man. Looks amazing. Thank you, thank you for that. I'm gonna let Pedro ask the question because it's, it's, it's from a mechanic standpoint. Mm -hmm. from he noticed something on the pipes after putting them on installing them which was a breeze right yeah, yeah no was, difficulty yeah yeah it was he really did a good. fantastic job contouring exactly what i was trying to look for underneath the air cleaner thank you very much but i'm gonna let pedro ask the question sure go ahead all right so what i noticed is the the exhaust only hangs through the from the exhaust studs in the cylinder heads and it doesn't, doesn't have a bracket at uh at, in the muffler to uh, stabilize it, so it shakes a lot. Is that something that you can uh, provide us or re do that for us, or you think it's not necessary? What would you say it's uh, shaking from? Uh, right, right at the muffler. Like most two into ones shake like that, but they do have a bracket that holds it in place and prevents it from like uh, putting stress into the weld. Of course. Well, as you can see, the pipe is very light. It's about six pounds or mm -hmm. something like that. yeah it's very lightweight i noticed that six and seven pounds uh all of the exhaust system and as you mentioned it only hangs from the cylinder studs mm -hmm. from, the, from the engine uh now it doesn't really need a bracket now what i would say uh are you having this uh shaking problem on the collector the outlet uh, no 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 absolutely it's at the end in the muffler exactly like every okay. two and two one does that and it, I was just, I was just wondering if uh, there was a way of like having a bracket in there. But if you say it's not necessary, I trust you because the work speaks for itself and it's amazing. Thank you for that. Please. Now, um, one thing I could suggest, which is very common and a really simple solution, it's muffler cement. Uh, cement. As you can see, it's the two headers go into the collector. Mm -hmm. And you know, since we open up a little. It's a two-inch tube, so we open up a little, and that's where the headers come in. Yes. Now, that's, I can't say it's perfect, because it's not, and that's why it kind of wobbles a little bit. Okay, okay. And that's why it has the springs, you know, to keep it attached. Exactly. But a very simple solution, you know, we've come across this before. It, it happens sometimes, you know, that, that opening is not as tight as we would, would like it mm -hmm. to be. But muffler cement will do it. Okay, know? got it. Like mu muffler gasket, yeah. Exactly. Muffler yeah, yeah. gasket. Um, mm -hmm. It'll do a, a very good seal. Uh, it'll stop the wobbling. And you won't have any leaks. Okay, from, got it. At, the, at the moment, it's very snug. There's no leaks and there's no squeaking, nothing. It's really snug. But I believe, like, with time, it will. time will tell, you know, like, if we need to do exactly. that with the... Okay, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. 
thanks again for calling back. It's Andy with Gallup Motorcycles. I appreciate it so much. Thanks, awesome. Andy. Goodbye. Bye-bye. So it looks like, you know, we can add this cement. Mm-hmm. I will only do that if like, I start hearing some squeaking or see some uh, some exhaust uh, leak. Uh, at this moment, it's a snug fit. I don't think that's the issue. The only thing I was worried was like, about all the weight, but he's right. It's uh, very lightweight, and uh, let's just like let time pass and see what happens. As you can see, I got 4,600 miles on her. Uh, so we put a couple thousand miles on since the install. Let's start her up. Initially I had concerns about the heat shields not being good enough. As you can see there's a heat shield right here and when it was first installed I was like oh I might need some more heat shields. And Gallup allows you to plan out where your heat shields go. This is their recommendation, um, but you can add more. But the catch is, is that you have to tell them where you want the heat shields before they ship the product. Otherwise, you got to deinstall the whole thing and send it back to them, as I discovered. Because I was concerned initially there weren't enough heat shields, but there's plenty. I've had no problems. just because I fell in love with the Evo sound on the Sportster, but it idles lower. So when you're riding it, it's got more of a sport bike kind of sound to it. But in no way would I compare it to the sound of an Akrapovich or Leo Vince or one of those other ones that are on a, you know, two or four cylinder street bike. Different sound. More throaty on the Sportster, for sure. with a good tune you're not going to get any pop all right so great my camera set up there with the road microphone i'm gonna do a couple ride bys uh, adjacent noise we have we're off a street so there's going to be some car noise behind so i feel that this is going to give you a, kind of a realistic expectation of what the exhaust is going to sound from you standing on the street so when you're flying by you know some people in a city environment how others are going to hear the exhaust system in your neighborhood and what have you probably won't be able to get too high on the revs but in first or second gear i know these comparisons are popular out there on youtube so i'm trying to provide an apples to apples comparison somewhat have no idea what microphone they're using. All right, first pass will be slow, first gear, about 2,000 RPM, 15, 16 miles per hour. Second pass, we'll do a stop right in front of the camera and do a takeoff from there. And another little flyby.
So now let's get into the laboratory for some other test results, including the SPO loudness test. For the SPL test, I've placed a sound pressure meter at three feet or one meter from the exhaust. The microphone that you'll be hearing on the video is placed at 12 feet. I'll use the SPL meter to determine idle levels as well as a couple modest revs to 5600 RPM as measurements. All measurements will be demonstrated in decibels. The SPL meter is set to C weighting with idle baseline set at 110 dB and the rev test at 120 dB. baby. Snakes just got attitude. So I'm right about 4,000 third gear, 53 miles per hour. And it's got this nice baritone to it. Red lines at 5,800 per gear on the Sportster. And we slide into fourth at 56 and still got that nice baritone. He let off the accelerator a little bit. It's got that pleasant note to it. Not overbearing, but you know it's there. And you'll get noticed. Like I, I pulled up to Ace Cafe, and as soon as I pulled up, somebody walked right over and said, hey man, what's, the, what's that exhaust? Just based on the sound, not the looks. Where's that exhaust? Gallup. Out of Texas. That's pretty good, it's quiet, but it's yeah. Of course, Ace Cafe, a gathering place for motorcyclists every Thursday for bike night. And I get looks and, and I get comments about its look, its unique look, and it's all been positive. Of course, anybody has got anything negative to say, they'll probably just keep on walking by, right? <laughs> but what about price? Well, you know, it's not cheap. It's not three, four hundred bucks. It's going to run you eight hundred to a thousand dollars, depending on your options. Now, I'm nobody special. But I was able to get a 10% discount just through purchasing directly through the website versus going to a third-party reseller or the eBay site. So when you talk to Andy, ask him for the Kenny Quest discount, 10%. What's it going to hurt? They're a small company. They're going to give you great attention, good customer service, good care, as I experienced. And they're about what I'm all about, which is a fair win-win transaction. And you're gonna have a product that's, you know, I'm gonna say semi-custom because you're not fabricating and engineering it from scratch. That's already been done for you. But it can be customized in certain aspects to whether you have an M8 soft tail, you got a Dyna, you got a Sportster, where the heat shields go. Maybe you got an older bike, don't need the O2 sensors. You know, they're, they'll fabricate it for any setup. With a balanced tune, intake, exhaust, and the tuner itself, I would expect your results to be similar to mine. On your Sportster is a balanced curve. Yeah, you're gonna pick up a couple horsepower, a couple foot-pounds of torque, you know, nothing like you're gonna be a dino sheet warrior you can brag about. You know, it's still not 100 horsepower, it's an 883. But just for the stage one, 
you're going to get a much, much more balanced curve and a balance through the rev range. So you're taking what the factory gave you so it can meet its emission standards and you get something that's carb compliant, California Air Resources Board in the tune, and you get a much better feeling and performance while riding through all the gears. Now I waited over a year, like 14 months, before I got my stage one. I wanted to concentrate on learning how to ride a motorcycle and not be too distracted. It was just my own psychology. But if I had to do it over again, and I didn't have some of the issues that I had with personalizing the exhaust system, but that's how I found Gallup, is I had a predicament. <laughs> And uh, it, it revolved around the cast brake pedal that comes with every Sportster. You can't put the Dominion plates on it. You can't change out the foot pedals. And I wanted to do that. And that's what got me on the path to find Gallup versus some of the other offerings that were available, like the Bassani radial sweepers and the Lowbrow Customs tracker exhaust. I needed a high swept exhaust so it would clear, allow the, the new custom brake pedal to get fitted. 90% of all the exhausts out there are swing underneath the brake pedal. The benefit of the high exhaust is, of course, if you're going to ride your 883 and do some carving in the canyons or the twisties, this is going to give you a little bit more ground clearance that you wouldn't have otherwise. And it being so light, as Andy said, you know, between six and seven pounds, it's gonna allow your motorcycle to feel lighter. And that was the first thing that I noticed when I rode it was, oh wow, I have to, I don't have to compensate with my weight as much on one side when coming off a stop. The balance is different. And it took a minute to adjust that, maybe a ride or two, and and now I'm used to it. But yeah, there's probably in weight, you know, six, seven pounds versus 20 something pounds on the old exhaust. It's a huge difference. So as you add performance parts to your, your Sportster, weight's gonna drop. And that's just gonna help as you grow in your riding experience and you can take advantage of these opportunities to ride either on track or around town in your area where there's twisties and challenging roads. You'll be able to take advantage of that. So my vote for Gallup Motorcycles and Andy, thumbs up. I'd buy it. I did buy it. <laughs> and I'm gonna enjoy it. And be sure to like the video, I appreciate it. And subscribe because we have more stages coming up. I got plans for the engine and we're gonna be doing that work. Wanda Remoto, my mechanic technician extraordinaire, and I will be diving into the engine of the Iron 83. Will we pick the Screaming Eagle 1200, the SNS Hooligan Kit 1250, or the 1275 Hammer Kit? Oh, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and you'll be alerted to that. Now, if you'd like to know more about this, I know that it was a detailed episode, but if you want to know more about my full stage one, which will cover the tune, the high flow air intake, the dyno, full dyno before, full dyno after, if that's of interest to you, then go ahead and click this box down below. It'll take you right to that episode. And you can learn more about my 2021 Iron 83, the Snakester, and what I've done to modify it at the stage one point. I'm Kenny Quest. Thanks for coming along. We'll see you on the next one.